Psalm 95, 6 says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Lord, we come to worship you. Lord, we come to honor you.
Trans revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting a week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. to mountains that I can't climb. Oh, you are with me, never leave me, because there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Good morning and welcome to this service of worship. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. And we hope that uh, over the next several minutes that you find the grace to be able to unburden yourself of some things that are on your heart and on your mind, to just be able to, to let go for a while as we worship the Lord together. If you're new here to Mariners, we would love to connect with you and we would invite you to use the link that's on the screen to uh, connect with us, and we appreciate that very, very much. Uh, this morning, we are going to look at a video about the Alpha program. Alpha is coming here to, to Mariners, to our community, but you can access it anywhere because it's going to be online. It's an 11-week experience where you get to be part of something that, that happens where people are able to ask questions uh, about their faith and uh, not, uh, not be 
talked about in a bad way. It's just a, it's a great time, and we hope that you'll be part of it, or perhaps you'll think of someone to invite, and then you could do it together. Someone who has questions. Let's watch this video now. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Now we're going to have a, a time of prayer, and as we lift up our hearts in prayer this morning, we want to give thanks to the Lord for the great work that our youth were able to do this week, and as they are looking forward, children and youth and adults, to the school year that's coming up, with all of the concerns, we really want to lift that up as well. And I would ask you that you join me now in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Be thou our vision, O Lord of our heart. Naught be all else to us save that thou art. You are our best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence is our light. And so, O God, we, we just want to cast our cares and concerns and burdens upon you today. You are God and we are not. So we cast our cares and concerns and burdens upon you today. Cares about things like reconciliation with people near and far. Cares about hunger and hurting and a world that seems so often out of control. Cares and burdens that we have regarding people we love who are sick and tired of being sick and tired cares and burdens and concerns about situations that we bring with us today that just don't seem to have a healing ending that we can see. We cast all of these cares and concerns and burdens upon you today, O oh God. We thank you that in the midst of, of uncertainty, whether it be regarding the school year or anything else that is on our mind or hearts, we know that you care and we know that you are the God of great mercy. So we call to mind 
your great mercy that sent Jesus to serve and die and rise again to eternal glory with us and for us. We call to mind your great holiness, the moral perfection that silences all arrogance and all shame and all filth and leaves us with nothing but humility before you. We call to mind your great righteousness with which you transform situations of despair into gardens of hope. O oh Lord, we are picturing in our minds right now some of those situations that you may want to plant your restoring, redeeming, saving will and ways. We call to mind all that you were and all that you will be in the matchless beauty of holy love. All of these things and many more, O oh God, we, we lift up to you. Indeed, great God of heaven, our victory won, may we reach heaven's joys, O oh, bright heaven's sun. And in the meantime, now in the things that we're dealing with, heart of our own hearts, whatever befall, still be our vision, O oh, ruler of all. We pray these things in the name of your son, who taught us to pray together by saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. As we open our worship this morning with Chris Tomlin's song, Good, Good Father, I invite you to reflect on two truths that can have the most transformative power in your life. They are, one, that you are God's child, and God is a good, good father. Tell yourself that today and every day. It's who you are, and it's who he is. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I 
can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. next song, A Prayer, was written in the 8th century by an unknown Irish poet, where he asked God to be his vision, his wisdom, and his best thought by day and by night. Our sermon today will speak about releasing life's burdens. If you think about it, giving the Lord your burdens does mean that you are asking the Lord to give you guidance and to be your vision. So please join us in singing one of the oldest and most moving hymns called, Be Thy Vision. Okay, children and those of you who are young at heart, we're going to invite you to gather around here and maybe grab a pair of sunglasses. Miss Jill is with us again. She's going to share with us something about sunglasses and God. Hey, you like my new shades? They are fun, aren't they? <laughs> kind, of, kind of jazzy, but did you know really sunglasses are helpful on a sunny day? Sunglasses, they actually filter out the harmful UV rays that might hurt your eyes or damage them. 
and sunglasses also can help you to see better uh, on a real sunny day. It can reduce the glare and help your, your eyes see better. So sunglasses, they protect your eyes and they help you to see better. And you know, that makes me think of other ways that we can protect our eyes because sometimes what we see can have a bad effect on our hearts and our minds. Do your parents not want you to watch R-rated movies? Or maybe there's some books or internet sites that they, they don't want you to, to see. Or maybe they blocked some channels on TV or video games. You know, your, your parents, it could be frustrating for you sometimes, but your parents are really trying to protect your eyes because they know that there are things that can hurt your heart and your mind. And the Bible has some good wisdom and advice about this. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I mean, who wouldn't want to think about these things? Things that are pure and pleasing and commendable and excellent. Anything worthy of praise, who wouldn't want to think on these things? But the truth is that the world often turns away from things that are good and pure. And Paul, he's the guy who wrote Philippians, he knew that if we think on things that are commendable and praiseworthy and excellent and pure, then there's a good chance that we're going to become this way. So just like you wouldn't go outside without sunglasses, put on some biblical wisdom. And, and next time you're wondering about a movie or a video game that you're thinking about playing, or maybe your friends want you to play, think about Philippians 4.8 and ask yourself, is it good? Is it praiseworthy? Is it lovely? Is it commendable? And also check with your parents. You know, just like you wouldn't go outside without putting on your sunglasses, don't go outside without putting on biblical wisdom to protect your heart and your mind. All right, have yourself a great week. We'll see you soon. Good morning, Mariners. I am Brooke McCowan. Today's scripture comes from Psalms 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Our second scripture comes from 1 Peter 5, 5 to 9. Young men in the same way will be submissive over those who are older. All of you clothe yourself with with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast, your, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a, roar, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. This, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the next hymn that we're going to sing is actually normally a hymn that goes at the end of worship, but in this case, I feel like it even sets up everything a little bit better. Um, and it's one that you can take with you today as well. Uh, Savior, again, to thy dear name we raise. With one accord, our parting hymn of praise. Guard thou the lips from sin, the hearts from shame, that in this house have called upon thy name. Let's call on his name this morning.
Good morning, and great to be with you here on this Sunday morning, August 30th. Hope you've been having a blessed weekend. Let's go to the Lord right now in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the gift of life and giving us the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for the many ways in which your Holy Spirit works in our lives. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to, uh, for us to hear your word this morning. And Lord, we pray right now that uh, for this message, uh, this is your message, not mine. Just pray that you guide these words and please let it touch people's hearts for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever felt like you were going through life trying to walk the Christian walk and it felt as though the weight of the world was on your shoulders? Maybe it felt like running a race with weights on. Or maybe it felt something like this. Carrying a heavy bag or some kind of heavy load over your shoulders. Representing a burden or life's burdens weighing you down. I've been there many times. And there are reasons why people have been feeling anxious or burdened as of late, understandably so. With the coronavirus pandemic this year, unemployment has caused a lot of concerns for many people, and the economic situation and the uncertainties surrounding that. And then how about the volatile situations with all the riots and the fights, the violence that have occurred this year, causing people to feel unsafe even in their homes? And also uncertainty about the future, future in general. That's another thing. And then personal burdens, uh, emotional and spiritual burdens that may be tied to some kind of physical illness. And then the source of the burdens may also be spiritual and internal and really have a tendency to drag a person down. Well, there's one Old Testament verse and one New Testament verse. And both instruct us on what to do with these burdens, no matter what they are. And from a spiritual standpoint, we are instructed from Psalm 55, 22, to cast our cares on the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all our anxiety on him. So the theme of this message has to do with releasing our burdens to God, releasing our burdens to God, and more specifically, to cast our burdens on God requires a life of faith. In, in the Greek language, this word casting has the idea of throwing down or throwing off. And it's something that's intentional with earnest effort or zeal, with the thought of, hey, I need to get rid of this. And well, I really needed to get rid of that. <laughs> I'm sit down. When we, when we talk about giving up something to God, what we're talking about is this idea of casting or throwing, and it implies that one's heart has to be determined or focused, and, and not compromising with whatever burden it is. So there's some emotion behind that word, um, as you just saw a few seconds ago when I threw that bag down. Now in the Hebrew from Psalm 55, this word casting means not holding on or clinging on to that burden bag, but it's more than just leaving it in an abandoned, neglected fashion. You see, it's really about leaving it with God. And that emotion behind it is that sense of determination and obedience in wanting to please God and wanting to hold on to him instead of the burdens. Now, what might some of these burdens specifically include? Well, I recall back in the early 2000s, when I was in college at a college radio station, uh, they played this Christian song. The Christian contemporary group back then, Forever After, had this song called I Lay It Down. And some of the lyrics are as follows. I lay it down to worship you. I'm laying down my sin tonight. People won't know me. Now I'm so different. And you know, those, those lyrics describe well how sin can be a burden in people's lives. In fact, sin can cause so many other burdens as well, and it can really spiral out of control. Some other lyrics include, I'm laying down my guilt tonight. People won't know me. Now I'm so different. And you know, you feel different 
after, you know, as, as you lay those burdens down, uh, people will notice God at work in your life. They will see that you have laid those burdens down, that they will, including those who don't know him. And it can be a real testimony to unbelievers in regard to how we handle life's situations. And, and by the way, as mentioned, this, this guilt and shame, this, that can be a burden in people's lives as well. And we need to release that. We need to nail that to the cross as Jesus uh, forgave us of our sins and cleansed us from all that shame and guilt. And so we can, we can live as uh, people who are free in Christ. So uh, those are some of the burdens. And then other burdens might include worries about certain situations. Um, and worry is something that can affect us not only spiritually and emotionally, but also physically as well. And how about the past? You know, clinging on to or holding on to incidents in the past. You know, we need to let those go as well and forgive. And then we'll feel much, much lighter. Now, according to Psalm 55, 22 and 1 Peter 5, 7, this laying down of a burden is this intentional, determined, emphatic effort uh, and, ca and casting forth of whatever way is weighing us down. And the basis of getting rid of those burdens is faith. It is faith that God supplies our need, the faith that God sustains us and that he loves us and will help us, uh, faith that he takes care of our situations, a faith that God cares. Does it ever feel to you that God doesn't care? Well, the Bible says that the Lord loves us and takes care of us and cares for us, and we need to believe that. It's a statement of faith. Even though, even though it may look at times like not much is happening. So we need, to, we need to hold on to our faith. And it says, God will never let the righteous be shaken. That's from Psalm 55. And that is a statement of faith right there. Uh, we need to recite that, that God is our helper and he is our refuge. Now, practically speaking, how do we apply this concept of casting our burdens on the Lord? Remembering that to cast our burdens on God requires a life of faith. So for me, it really helped in regard to a couple of personal issues in my life fairly recently. Uh, the Lord brought to mind four passages, including these two, 1 Peter 5, 7 and Psalm 55, 22. And the other two passages included Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 and also Philippians 4, 4 to 7. And of course, the, the Matthew 11 passage has to do with Jesus' invitation to the weary, those who are weary and burdened, to come to him and find rest for their souls. And then Jesus said uh, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And then from Philippians 4 is the instruction not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our request to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. And so as I recited those passages and prayed that heartfelt prayer, and those Holy Spirit-led tears started to flow, it felt as though the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders, and I felt much lighter from that moment forward. And, you know, the Holy Spirit may bring to mind other passages for you that, that speak to your situation, whatever unique life circumstances that you're going through, and he'll speak to you in that moment if you consciously and willfully go to him and release those burdens to him. God will comfort you through his Holy Spirit. And, you know, turning over problems, situations, burdens, that's not an easy thing to do. And the Lord speaks to us in many different ways. And he speaks in a still small voice. And one of the things I hear often personally is turn it over, turn it over. And that's not an easy thing to do. But we rely on, on God's strength to do that. Next, we see from 1 Peter 5, 7, what cares, what anxieties? Well, the Bible says all cares, all anxieties. So whether the burden has something to do with your past, maybe it's a memory, maybe it's a trauma, maybe it's some kind of internal struggle or struggle with fear, um, the Lord wants us to turn those burdens over to him and allow him to be in control of the situation and allow him to bear our burdens. And, you know, negative thoughts can be burdens as well. Uh, so it may take speaking to your thoughts literally and telling them to stop and then reciting scripture, scripture verses 
and the truth of God's word to replace those lies of the enemy. So the Lord wants us to cast all these burdens, all whatever anxieties, cares that we have, whatever concerns, he wants us to cast those on him, big or small, no matter how big or small it is, the Lord cares. Now, sometimes we may feel that the Lord doesn't care or that he is distant, but, you know, that's based on a feeling and not faith. In faith, we can declare from 1 Peter 5, 7, that the Lord cares for us. We can personalize, the Lord cares for me, the Lord cares for Joe, the Lord cares for, add your name in there. You know, Jesus said over and over again that according to your faith, it will be done for you. So if, whenever we're looking for God's help, it's important to approach the throne of grace with this attitude of faith and also humility, as we'll get to in a few minutes. But the Lord's care for us, as stated in this verse, it really means to be concerned with, uh, paying special attention to, giving thoughtful attention to the details of our lives, taking an interest. And, you know, that's the kind of God we serve. We serve a personal God, not one who is aloof. Uh, we, we serve a God who is um, he's really in, interested in the details of our lives. He wants to comfort us, um, and whether in good times or bad, he wants to be with us, uh, wants to be close to us um, if we let him. And, he, and he, wants us to be, he wants to be close to us when we're burdened as well and invites us to turn to him. Now, Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Now, again, casting our burdens on God requires this life of faith, but that also comes with the acknowledgement and the understanding that our problems may not immediately go away. See, what God does not promise is a removal of the situation, at least not right away, but the promise is for sustenance, for help, and for strength to get through each of our life circumstances in a way that honors and glorifies him. So are we approaching God believing in that promise of sustenance? It's a sustenance that has to do with a God who is mindful of us, who who fills us and strengthens us and supports us and also uh, who provides for and nourishes our souls. So up to this point, we've looked at the importance of and the meaning of casting our burdens on him um, and that it requires a life of faith. And, and that's faith in God's sustaining presence and his faith in his power in our lives. Um, next, what should the condition of our hearts be? so that we may readily get to that point of turning our burdens over to him. So there's more, you know, what, so what else does this life of faith entail? Well, there's two points, two other points from, from 1 Peter chapter 5 in that context of the verse in verse 7, where it says, cast our cares on him. Uh, it says in 1 Peter 5, 5, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud and gives grace that's undeserved help, favor, Grace um, gives grace to the humble. And then the next verse says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. So if, if we want to receive help from God and his strength, his support in our lives, uh, one, of the, one of the things we need to do is humble ourselves. And one of the things about the tendency, though, to, to hold on to life's circumstances and and burdens and to try to get through the, each of our situations on our own strength, on our own power, is the, this human pride element that is there. Um, it is uh, something that's it's a natural tendency in the, in the flesh to want to be in control of our situations. But see, we need to let that go. We need to let God be in control. And to give up control of the situation definitely is not easy. Um, so in order to receive the blessing and the favor of God in our lives, in terms of his support, and to actually get to the point of being willing to turn those burdens over to him, it really takes humility. It takes humility in our relationship with God and also humility in our relationships with others. And so that brings to mind the question, in what ways in our relationships with others do we need to humble ourselves? So we need to be sensitive to that. And casting our burdens on the Lord, 
uh, as mentioned, requires a life of faith, faith that God cares, and, and, this, and it's also requires, it also requires this faith living in our journey in Christ and uh, godly character as we live out our lives. So humility, and then in verse 8, there's another point about this. Uh, being alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So in order to cast life's burdens on the Lord, it's important to remember the reality of spiritual warfare in our lives. I mean, we are in a spiritual battlefield. That is, that is the truth, and the mind is often uh, really the, the main part of that battlefield. Uh, the enemy, though not behind every bush, and we can't blame him for everything in our lives, but nevertheless will seek to take advantage of our problems and in many cases make them worse. So all the more important to hold on to Scripture, to hold on to the truths of God's Word, and, and to be alert to our thoughts and attitudes in our heart, and also to be alert to what we say, to be alert to our language, to watch our language, as that could also open the door uh, for the enemy to influence in certain ways. So but we need to prayerfully, in Jesus' name, rebuke all this negative aspect of our spiritually, of all the situations in our lives, and resist the enemy by focusing on the things of God in his word and the truth in his word. And, and also, again, in terms of negative thoughts, accusations, uh, uh, or beliefs, attitudes about ourselves that go against the identity that we have, that we truly have in Jesus Christ, we need to resist that negativity as well. And we need to claim our identity in Christ. And we can claim our identity in Christ by reciting those verses. And I, I like to, me, for me personally, I like to recite, you know, I'm, I'm dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm cleansed, forgiven, redeemed, and white as snow. I'm seated with God in the heavenly realms. Um, I'm a new creature in Christ. The old has passed away. The new has come. And he's removed my sins as far as the east is from the west. So, you know, all this, we, can, we really need to get this ingrained in our hearts about our identity in Christ. And then, so verse 9, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So, standing firm in the faith, what does that look like? Well, uh, when you think of faith, you think of holding on to what is positive and what is hopeful. And, of course, holding on to the scriptures, and that, that's, that's all good, very important. But how about times when life does not seem like, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, when, when trying to be positive is not so easy in, in your life. Um, how about those times when it seems like the Lord doesn't care? It, it seems like the Lord's distant. It may even seem like the Lord is, wants something bad to happen or is causing that. So being positive all by itself is not going to work. Uh, standing firm in the faith takes much more than that. It's, it's really about going deeper in the things of God, deeper into the scriptures, into the truths of God's word. Meditating on the scriptures, yes, but even more specific than that. Um, I mean, if, if, the Lord, if, if you feel like the Lord is distant uh, and doesn't care, uh, meditate on passages that really communicate the opposite of what that lying, negative, uh, enemy-inspired thought may be telling. And so, uh, just like when I shared just a few minutes ago about the burden, that was lifted off of me when I went to 1 Peter 5, 7 and Psalm 55, 22, that the Lord cares and I need to cast my burden on him, uh, that God will sustain me, and, and that Jesus is gentle and humble in heart. Uh, so he's not standoffish. He's gentle and humble in heart. He's, he's with you and he's close to you. And, and that God longs to give us his transcendent peace to replace all that anxiety in our lives. So more than a head knowledge, this really has to be a heart knowledge. It really has to be ingrained in you uh, so that you get this knowledge into your heart and then live it out. And finally, uh, if you've never really accepted, if you've never accepted Christ into your heart and into your life, you know, maybe you've gotten close to that, maybe you haven't officially accepted him, maybe there's this, uh, this guilt and shame burden looming over your life. Well, I want to tell you that uh, Jesus invites you to receive his forgiveness. And from that point on, you can be free of all those burdens of shame and guilt. And, and as I pray this, this prayer to close, uh, you can say that prayer um, to the Lord and invite him into your heart right now. So let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, we, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for these two verses from, um, from 1 Peter 5 and Psalm 55. And we thank you for 
for all the truths of your word that we're able to meditate on on a daily basis and, and really get it into our hearts and in our lives. And Lord, we ask for your help, for your Holy Spirit. Uh, we know life is, life is tough. It's, it's not easy uh, going through each day uh, emotionally and spiritually. There are things that happen. Uh, life throws curveballs at us. And Lord, I just pray right now that uh, each person listening, and for me, myself, uh, and for everyone, just pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit's power um, to help them claim their identity in Christ and to turn over life's burdens. Lord, help them know that you're near. Help them know that you care and that you're with us always, even till the very end of the age. And we, we thank you uh, for your many blessings in our lives. And we thank you for Jesus Christ and the work, the finished work at the cross and, and how that took away our, our shame and guilt so we can be with you forever in, in eternity. And we can be in that personal, close relationship with you on this earth. And that you uh, will help us get through our life situations and that you will be our refuge and our strength all the way through. We give you all the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We welcome you into our closing song called Come As You Are. And it supports Pastor Joe's message of casting your cares and laying your burdens down at the foot of the cross. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow heaven can't cure so lay down your burden lay down your shame all who are no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your Too far. So 
Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. Come as you are, come as you are, come as you are. The Lord gives us that invitation. Let's pray. Lord, we know that you have gone to amazing lengths for us in our salvation, something we can't even fathom. We can't begin to experience or feel. But we thank you for enduring the horrible, horrible pain that you did to save us. So help us to just remember that you are always there to carry those burdens for us. If we would just give them up to you and not take them back, we would have such a lighter journey. So thank you, Lord, for this and all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So go with God, people of God. Be blessed. And come join us again next week. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. And give you peace. Amen. Okay. Sorry, I almost gave it to you.